In this lecture, let's check an example with using index and match functions in VBA. And just like VLOOKUP, index and match can be used to look up data. But the VLOOKUP function, as much as I love it, only returns data to the right side of the lookup value. And in the previous lecture, we used the VLOOKUP to get the places of birth of each football player in column A of the goal scorers worksheet. But what if, and I'm going, going to delete this formula now, and what if the places of birth were to the left side of the lookup values? So I will select column A and click Ctrl X to cut and I will paste them here in column C. Now in such case we will not be able to use VLOOKUP. Of course, when we write code in VBA, we can write inside the code to switch the positions of these columns. Then we can use VLOOKUP and at the end of the code we can bring back the positions as they are now and this will not result in slow performance at all because as we have seen already VBA is a powerful language. But in this lesson I would like to review using index and match because as per my experience I have noticed that some Excel users find using index and match a little bit difficult. So just like we have done in the previous lesson, let's get the place of birth for Cavani first. So first let's check how index function works. The index function returns the value of an item in an array. So I, for the array argument, let's make a reference to all cells from B2 to B and from the previous lesson we know that in this sheet we have 899 rows. And then the second argument is row number. Well, I can see that Edinson Cavani's name is on the fifth position in this range. So here I will type in 5. And then the next argument column number is in square brackets so it's not mandatory. I can provide one because I only have one column in this array or I can leave it like that. So let's close the parentheses and click enter and Excel returns salto because basically it's on the fifth position in this range of cells between B2 and B899. But you might be wondering now how would I know the position of each item all the times. And you are right, we cannot know in advance and therefore we can use the match function to get the relevant position. And while index returns value, the match function returns the position of an item in a range of cells. So here I will write match and let's write the match function. The lookup value we can write Edinson Cavani or we can directly reference cell C6. The lookup array are all cells between C2 to C899. And finally the match type I want exact match so we can use zero here. And when we close the parentheses, Excel will return 5. So now we can combine these two functions and write them with one formula. And here I will write index and match. And I will write directly in the formula bar. Index, the array argument are all cells between B2 and B899. And instead of hard coding 5, like we did a few seconds ago, we can use the match function to get the position of Edinson Cavani 
in all cells between C2 to C899 and we need exact match. Close the parentheses one time for the match function and one time for the index function. And Excel returns salto. Now, if I want to check this first, this formula for someone else, maybe for Angel Di Maria, I can change this to C11 and Excel returns Rosario, which is correct. So now let's go back to the ghost color sheet and I'm going to delete the data in this column and back to the visual basic editor where I will add a new module which I will call using index and match and let's start a new subroutine which I will call index and match example and now you can pause the video and try the, to write the code before watching my solution all right instead of writing this from scratch I will go back to the subroutine which we wrote in the previous lesson and I will copy the code and paste it in the new subroutine because a lot of the things will be the same now I will delete what we have in the loop and let's check what we also have here we have variables to store references for both worksheets and we're going to need these variables in this subroutine as well so I'm going to leave them then we have variables to hold references for the last rows in both worksheets and then we have a variable which will serve as a counter in the loop and we are going to need these three and then we have data range which I'm going to delete and I will delete this as well now let's check something the last row in the data WS which holds a reference to worksheet places of birth if we leave it like that it will return 1 because in column A we have nothing here so we need to change this to either column B or column C it doesn't matter and now let's go back to the formula that we wrote and let's check the arguments so basically we have one range for the index function and then we have another range for the match function now potentially we can use only one range for a variable but I believe it's going to be easier to understand if we use two variables so I will declare two variables which the first one I'm going to call index range as range and the second will be match range as range and these are objects so let's set them first so I will type, type in set index rng to be equal to data ws dot range all cells from B2 to B whatever the last row in this worksheet is and then one way to set the, the match range is to write something similar but this time we, we need to use column C so C2 to C and data last row Another way to set the match range is by using the index range and then we can use the offset property of that range and offset zero rows and one column to the right side. So now 
just to test that this works, let's select these two ranges. So I will write index range dot select and then match range dot select. Now this is something that I'm not sure I have mentioned, but the select method will return an error if we try to select objects which are not in the active sheet. So just to show you what I mean, if I click go scorers to make this sheet active, and now when I click run, this should result in a runtime error. Select method of range class failed. To select objects, we need to be in the active sheet. So now I will place a stop marker here, a breakpoint, and I will click run. And now I will click F8 to execute this line which is in yellow. And then I will click F8 and we will see that Excel will select the cells in column C. If I scroll, the last cell which will be selected is cell C899. And if I hover the mouse on the data last row variable, we can see that its value is 899. So now I will reset this. And I will delete these two commands because I only use them for testing purposes. And now let's write the commands inside the loop. All right, first let's write the match function. So basically we need to populate column C and therefore we can make a reference to the cells in this column, in this sheet. So the name of the sheet is goes ws. So let's write goes ws dot range on column C on row X dot value equals to the match function is an Excel worksheet function. So we can write application dot worksheet function dot match. And once again, we do not get a great tooltip here. So let's quickly go back to the match function in order to see its arguments. So we have a lookup value, a range, and then we have zero, which stands for exact match. Now the lookup values will be the cells in column A of this sheet. And then The lookup array will be our match range variable. So this is going to be a long line and therefore I will click here space and underscore. And on the next line, I will write the first argument, which is goes ws dot range a on row x dot value. The second argument is our match range variable and the third argument is zero. So now I will click run and let's see what's going to happen in column C of the Go Scorers worksheet. I will click run and we get a runtime error unable to get the match property of the worksheet function class. But this is not the only issue we have. Now apparently Excel considers the cells in this column here as dates. So what we can do, I will do it, actually I will solve this manually, I will select column C and then in the home tab I will click this drop down and choose number. And let's also decrease the decimals. So this was one of the issues. The other issue is that we are getting a runtime error because Glenn Murray apparently isn't present in the data of the places of birth worksheet and therefore the match function returns an error. And unfortunately, 
When we use the function like that in VBA, it interrupts our code. But we already know how to solve this. And all we need to do is to write on error resume next. So this is not the best way to handle errors, but for functions like VLOOKUP, MATCH, INDEX, SEARCH and so on, it works. So I will click run now and there aren't any errors. So we already wrote the MATCH function, but it only returns the positions. So basically, we know that, for instance, Romeo Lukaku will be, the name Romeo Lukaku will be on 654 position in this list here. If we exclude the header, it is 654. And now we need to use the index function in order to get the actual places of birth. So let's check the index function. And we have the first argument is an array, which we will provide our index range variable. And then the second argument is the match function. So that being said, directly here, let's write the index function, which is also an Excel worksheet function. So let's write application.worksheet function.index. And I will click space and underscore because this is a very long line and on the new line I will click tab to indent and the first argument here is the index range function now I will move the match function on the new line I believe it's going to be easier to read and actually I will delete this and leave it like that and we need to close parentheses one more time so let's test it I will delete the blank lines here and back to the goal scorers worksheet and let me resize in order to see what's going on in column C I'm using a laptop with a very limited screen size, so... Okay, I will click Run now. And this is how Index and Match work together. I'll see you in the next lesson.